So it looks like once again, it's time to talk about AI as Sora was just released on Thursday and it's causing quite a stir. If you haven't heard, Sora is an AI model that can create realistic and imaginative scenes from text instructions. So this video is going to take a look at Sora, why it's important, how it's going to affect us as artists. And as always, I'm trying to be fairly open-minded, optimistic, but critical at the same time. So if you want to take a look, you need to go to openai.com or just type in Sora and it's bound to come up. And you're instantly greeted with this video of whatever these things are floating into whatever that is in the background. And immediately it does look very impressive. It's worth pointing out the links at the top. You can find out about the company, their safety policy, which is kind of important and other things at the top there. If we scroll down, we can see one of their sort of flagship videos here of a person walking. It's a bit stuttery. You can see they're kind of floating on the floor a bit, but it does look very impressive. You've got some lovely reflections on the floor, which look really impressive. The movement is actually quite good. The hands don't even look that bad. One arm does look longer than the other, but you can't really tell that straight away. It looks a little bit like the Adobe Premiere warp stabilizer effect on some shaky footage as the face kind of distorts very slightly, but it's very subtle and it's still very impressive. You can see the text prompts down the bottom here and you can open them up to find out exactly what they typed in. Apparently, we don't know this for certain, but that's the impression we're given. You can scroll across to more videos just by clicking on them. And it's also got the time length of the video just here. So the last one was one minute long. Again, very impressive that it's producing one minute long video. This one's only 10 seconds. <laughs> it's doing an amazing job. The feet look really kind of odd as they squish into the ground and he's got quite a lot of toes there, which don't look right. But uh, these are really minor things that you don't notice instantly. And it's almost hard to tell that this isn't some sort of stock footage. There's this really subtle camera movement to it, which is quite impressive. It's not just these characters moving on the screen. The camera is moving really slightly. I find it interesting that it says depth of field here, but there isn't really a lot of depth of field. So I don't know much about these prompts and what they really do and mean, but we'll, I'm sure, find this out in the long run. This is another video that you'll see a lot of, and a lot of people have been showing this one off on X and TikTok and so forth. Again, this is 17 seconds long, so long pieces of video, but this one is cut up into segments. And there's a part of me that's quite excited by this. You could start to imagine writing your own film. It might be tough to have the same character because AI struggles to keep consistency with your character, but I'm sure that's something that will emerge in the future and you'll probably be able to put your own face on these characters, which again brings up ethical issues, which we'll talk about later. This one seemed really impressive to me. It really does look like some stock footage. It's only eight seconds long, but again, really impressive and initial glance, uh, you just really wouldn't notice. So you can really see the potential of this technology is quite immense. They've obviously taken care to order these videos in a certain way, because I don't think this one looks anywhere near as good as the other ones. There's something wrong inside the hand there. Fur just isn't quite right. It's a little bit static and this expression is very odd. Candle looks very odd. The wax is melting very quickly and I'm not sure what's going on in the background there. That doesn't really make sense to me. It's still very impressive, but it does go to show there are limitations. And remember that we're seeing the absolute best. They probably spent hours and hours and hours and hours writing in prompts trying to get the best videos to show off. So I'm sure this technology has a long way to go. This one's an interesting one, sort of origami paper abstract look. I quite like that because again, it shows the possibilities uh, that you can be quite creative and imaginative and it doesn't, you don't have to stick to this sort of rigid people all the time. You can have abstract things like this. What I find really clever is the fact that it's got uh, the animal movements here are very effectively captured and it really feels like it's alive. This is interesting because it's a very short prompt and it's these pirate ships battling each other as they sail inside a coffee cup and that's really effective. I would have probably put this one a little bit further forward because I really like the imaginative style of this. It's great fun, but they probably didn't put it at the start because there's lots of issues as it kind of disappears behind this wave and doesn't kind of move in an effective way like the previous videos did. It does seem very effective at capturing people. I don't particularly like the camera movement on this one. The facial movement looks rather odd and I think that's something that's going to be a struggle for them in the future. But again, it's really impressive. As we scroll through, they talk about who it's going to be available, these red teamer people who are going to test it out and uh, give feedback on the harms or risk. Apparently, they're very keen to stress that fact on the website. So it's obviously a big issue that they know is out there. This video is quite interesting to me. You start to see the problems that they're trying to deal with. Just look at the hands of every model and you can see there's something going wrong there. This person's eyes, for example. Uh, there's real issues that they've still got to overcome. So we're still not quite there, but again, 
it's come a long way. This particular one I find quite fascinating because the reflection in the glass, I don't really understand how they managed to get OpenAI to understand what that is. It's uh, fascinating, really. This octopus interests me a lot as well because the tentacles are quite cleverly done. They're not really coming out of nowhere, although they are at the same time. It's, it's just enough to fool you into thinking this is a real octopus and a whatever crab creature that is, even though it's got millions of legs. <laughs> You're probably going to see a lot of this particular video as well. The prompt is five grey wolf pups frolicking and chasing each other, but it's getting very confused with how many are there and they seem to be emerging from nowhere. And sometimes there's three, sometimes there's more than five. So that's kind of interesting to me. And that's obviously a difficulty they're going to have to tackle. Now, if you scroll down the site, you do see once again, this idea of them taking this safety aspect very seriously. They say they're working with the red teamers and domain experts in areas like misinformation, hateful content and bias. And apparently they're trying to build tools to help detect misleading content. So I think that is really absolutely fundamentally important. And that's something I'm already seeing lots of discussion about on forums such as TikTok, X and so forth. So a few of my thoughts there. Yes, it's really good. It's fantastic. This is a huge leap forward in terms of how good this technology is becoming. It's still not quite there. And I actually think that last bit, like getting hands, which are really tricky, that's probably going to take them quite a while. I think what we often see with these tools is that initial big jump where they get close to something and it's those last steps that are very, very difficult and will take a long time to get to. Tools like Midjourney, which is considered the best for still images, still struggles with hands, and you can still see it's going to take them a long time to get to the point where those inaccuracies are ironed out. Also, I tend to find the more you see of these things, the more you notice the inaccuracies and you notice the problems. At first glance, as everybody's looking at this for the first time, it's a real wow moment, but it doesn't take long before you start looking at things like the hands, the eyes, to see whether they're real or not. And they are easy to spot once you know what you're looking for. I would say it is quite hard to spot on those big landscape shots though, but if you look really closely and if there's any people in shot and there's any movement to those people, you can usually see with the discerning eye. So why is this so important? Well, obviously it shows the huge advancement that we've had over the past year in AI. And that again leads to questions such as, where is this headed? What's the goal as well? What are people going to do such as artists whose jobs it is to create this content, now they're being replaced? So what you will certainly see a lot of are the negative arguments and rightly so. In the artistic industry, there's a worry that this is going to put people out of work. And yes, that's a definite threat. I still don't think this is anywhere near close enough to replace uh, stock footage and videographers and so forth. But I do believe the still image models such as Midjourney have possibly affected the industry in that way. I have heard particularly freelance concept artists who are not getting as much work. It is difficult to say for definite as the industry has gone through quite a slowdown recently, but it's hard to deny that this is an obvious consequence of this kind of technology. I sometimes wonder what the point is and the goal of this software is, because there's a huge amount of money going into this, into image generation and video generation. This recent article from the Guardian newspaper released just today, time of recording, so the 17th of February, shows that OpenAI is valued at 80 billion. This is a huge amount and certainly not inconsequential. And the image generation and video generation is a big part of this. So it has huge financial backing. So someone out there with lots of money is seeing the potential of this software. And is that potential just to replace artists and videographers? I don't think it's that much money to put in just for that reason. So the potential goes a lot deeper and has worrying overtones. The media is extremely powerful and fake video content could be particularly damaging when it comes to election times. And we've already seen the power of things like deep fakes. And as that technology gets better and it gets harder to recognize these fakes, they become more powerful. That of course is why we see this big section on OpenAI's site about safety, which certainly highlights those concerns, even though they're putting a lot of effort into suggesting that they are thinking about those concerns and they have ways of mitigating them. So this not only has the potential to disrupt society in terms of taking away people's jobs and diminishing the role of artists, but there are other arguments about election tampering, deep fakes getting better. There's even the pornography industry that people are worried about. There's possibly the potential of taking someone's face from Facebook and then creating pornography based on that person's face. And this is by no means new, this is already happening, but this is pushing it further into the video realm. There is of course a positive side to this. There's many people out there who don't have the skills, but they're very creative or they've got a story to tell that's really important for people to hear. 
This technology potentially could break down those barriers, so we won't need to buy very expensive software to produce these films. You won't need to spend lots of money training yourself in these technologies. You probably won't need such powerful hardware and computers, so again, breaking down those barriers to entry into these creative fields. Again, there's difficulty in that positivity. We have the job losses, but we also have the kind of job creation through the breaking down of barriers. Again, there's a counter argument to this technology being available to everyone, means that we get this flood of really dull, boring AI created videos on YouTube, which it seems like people use tools to just scrape a website of its information and then put stock images or videos over the top of it and have an AI voice read it out. They seem very dull and lifeless and lacking in personality, but we kind of have to go through that. YouTube is dealing with those and therefore pushing those down in the algorithm supposedly. And you're bound to have waves of these things coming in and going out as people realize they don't bring in a lot of revenue. And that to me highlights the crucial part of this problem, which is kind of greed, I suppose. I think a lot of the time, those people who create those kind of AI videos are looking for a way to make money, a side hustle. Of course, there's some creators out there who will want to use those tools and create effective and interesting content, and it can all be AI generated. I'm not saying that's a bad thing because if we want to watch that, it's interesting, it's compelling, that's great. But what we tend to see is people just pushing out content in the hope of making some money. And that's at the kind of lower end of the scale. At the upper end, we're seeing people wanting to replace people's jobs again so they can make more money. And at the very top end in politics, we're seeing people trying to manipulate people so they can put people in power and make more money. I'm not trying to peddle any conspiracy theories or anything like that, but naturally in our capitalist societies that most of us live in, money is a big driver for motivation. And because of that, the extreme potential of these tools tends to be more of a worry because we know that there's so many greedy people out there, there's very manipulative people out there who will only use this for their own gain. And it doesn't take many of those to have a huge impact on our societal structure, especially when you have this sort of technology available. And that really is the elephant in the room with all these technologies that we don't really have the societal structures to cope with them at the moment. And when people say AI is going to be life-changing, there's no doubt it's already changing many people's lives. And there's a big discussion to be had about that impact and how we can best structure society around it. But unfortunately, governments and institutions are very slow to react to this sort of thing, and they're much quicker to react when there's money to be made. So yes, I have big concerns, and there is a big pessimistic side of me that's very worried about this technology. But there is also an optimistic side of me that can see the potential of these technologies and I am very excited about them. I feel like most artists are certainly creators first and the kind of money aspect and making a living comes second, but it's also the first thing that we think about because we have to survive. And most established artists, creators that are looking at this or perhaps people wanting to go into the industry, they'll be looking at these technological advancements and be worried and rightly so. Because most artists and creators, which I think covers almost every human being out there. The dream for them is to do this as their lifestyle choice, as their job and career. And that's what frustrates me so much is that we have to think firstly about getting a career more than we think about being a creator. And that's the biggest thing that frustrates me. We're all focused on the making money because that's how we have to live. And hopefully I can make money as an artist. It's such a shame that we can't be creators anyway and everybody have that chance to create and excite people with storytelling and so forth. I know I'm going slightly into the realms of fantasy there and we live in this capitalist society where money is king. And to be fair, I don't want to overly criticize that because it's a system that kind of has emerged naturally to create order. But I do sometimes feel like we're stuck in that way of thinking and it's very difficult to get out of it now. And these new technologies that are emerging, I think could be a really good thing, but they're not because of the impacts they have and the greed that's inherent in our societies. So strangely, I find myself encouraging artists that it's still okay to go into the industry because I don't think this is going to develop as fast as they think. But I don't know that for a fact. I just have this feeling that they're going to find that last bit of getting hands right, getting movement right, very, very difficult. But I do find it odd that I'm kind of rooting against this technology, when really deep down, I'm a creator and I want other people to be able to create. And this sort of technology should break down the barriers and allow lots of people to create. So I'm caught in this strange binary opposites of it's a really great thing, but it's a really bad thing. And I just don't know quite where it's going or where I stand in the whole situation. But I do want to end the video on a positive that I do think these technologies are very exciting for creativity at a base level. 
they do break down the boundaries and allow more people to be creative. They create opportunities for people to tell their stories, their point of views in an artistic, elaborative and creative way. Yes, there are massive issues and some of which I haven't even talked about in this video, but I do hope there aren't new creators out there who are put off going into the industry or current creators that are thinking of moving out of the industry because of this technology. Whilst it may have big effects on our industry, it's difficult to say how much effect it's going to have and by what time, but try to remember the reason that you enjoy what you do so much. You're a creator, you're an artist, and those ideas and excitement are important. Keep creating and keep being an artist because I feel like it's so important to us as human beings. I hope this video was informative for you and in some way helps you to understand the situation that's going on and maybe encourages you to keep going with your artwork and keep being excited by it. I'm sure lots of you out there have lots to say on the subject and I'm very interested to hear what that is and to hear from you. I do read and listen to all the comments and they do inform my own opinions. So I value your comments and feedback. So please comment below and let me know what you're thinking. Thanks for watching and I look forward to hearing your thoughts.